Hello. With any luck, this has all worked, and we're here, and you can see us. So, hi. How's it going? It's all broken. It's probably all broken. I've probably broken everything, because that's what I do. I'm going to hope that everyone can hear us, and I'm going to get right into this. Um, I was going to do this intro in Gion, but uh, my accent's really bad, so I decided not to. Um, this week on the station, we've got the Relay Dedicated, Canadian Syrup. We've got the Relay Imaginative, Stormy Winters. We've got the Relay Annoying, me. And we've got the Relay Completely Insane, Papa Dolvac. See, you use, you use dedicated, but really I think you mean enslaved. Don't tell him that, or he'll start knowing. How's everyone? Are you talking to us in general, or just everybody out Everyone, there? Everyone. Literally every single oh, okay. person in the world. I want an up, an update on how they are doing. Production if they're schedule. they're capable of speaking and understanding your language. You want a production schedule on their attitudes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to Saturday. Well, I feel like a Saturday. There's, there's not really to a Saturday. You're not like, you don't welcome someone to a Saturday, because it's like... If you're welcoming, welcoming someone to a Saturday, it implies like you're already there, but we're all kind of entering at the same time, and no one really has ownership of like the Saturday. Well, so, technically, like, aren't people in Australia already in Sunday? So, wouldn't this be invalid? Okay, know. true, but David's in the same time zone as me. Mm -hmm. But I'm so, not. Yeah, neither is not, yes. neither of them are. Yeah, but we're ahead of you guys, so we would be able to welcome you to Saturday. But you couldn't welcome us to Saturday. If it weren't we're already the Saturday for them. It's what? already... No, because we're ahead of them. Anyone that thinks Why this like conversation is ridiculous should have heard the conversation we had while we were setting up for this about whether or not Big Benny's noodles are ramen or lo mein. Oh, 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 and, oh, oh, oh ramen. Ramen. they're, they're trying ramen. to talk to each other ramen. and Sean. Okay, look, I'm just going to get this Let's out here. Better. <laughs> You've all been lied to. People out there. You've been lied to, all right? There is a conspiracy afoot. Big Benny's noodles are not noodles. Nowhere on the package does it say... Oh, they are noodles, I'm sorry. Are not ramen. <laughs> they are Big Benny's noodles. They are not Big Benny's ramen. They come in paper containers. Paper you had to start containers. this, David, didn't you? You shut yeah, your dude. mouth. Let me finish. I need a platform to I talk heard to the people about the truth. And we figured they this need out. to know. They need to know that they've been lied to, because people, there's there, there's something to foot here. All right. Big Benny's is not ramen. It is is lo mein or whatever other type of noodle you you want. It don't matter, but it is a dry noodle. <laughs> it comes in a pl in a in a non plastic paper takeout container. There's no way that there's broth in there. It leak out. It's a noodle. It's not. It's not ramen. Now, anyone who says it's ramen is a liar. So Pete, everyone, you remember. Uh, I think that you should all now go out and ask Disco Lando whether Big Benny's is ramen or lo mein. Cause... You'll need to. You'll need to ask him. It says noodle right on the box. <laughs> see, see, ramen is is a broth dish with noodles in it. Noodles are not the main component of the dish. They are merely part of the dish. Like, you, you what got, if it, I there just eat the noodles, noodles out of the soup and leave the broth? Then I still then just eat be, the noodles. It would be the same thing as, like, that's like saying that, like, spaghetti and meatballs is, like, a meatball dish, right? It's like saying, like, it's like Big Betty's meatballs, but you open a can, it's spaghetti and meatballs. You you know what? You all asked for Dolvac again, and this is what happens when this you get This is what Dolvac. you get, people. You get the truth. <laughs> as far oh. as you know. Oh, I know. Okay, so what happened this week in Star Citizen? There was... You, you okay there, CS? I'm, I'm fine. I'm just... It, 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 this is Relay, I guess. Okay, all right. Um, this is Relay. This is Relay. Did you think we were professionals? We should probably address the, the things that are like... The right names? Here. Sure. So, uh... About 20 minutes ago, Dolvac was like, we should do everyone's names in Gian. And 
then we did everyone's names in Jian. So these are what our names look like spelled out in Jian. For anyone well, wondering. These, the, the closest interpretation of them. Yeah. Okay, to be fair, it, did you put David on yours or Eris? Eris. Okay, so Canadian Surf has a longer username than you, yet his is two characters long. We, we just went with CS because we were... Oh, no you're too time. lazy. We did not have time to fully translate Canadian Surf. It would, like, be the entire page. I've been, I've been neglected because apparently I'm too much work. Just two letters. I'm not worth the effort, guys. Protest. Well, see see that stream of, like, four letters in the middle of Dolbach's name there? That's the O. Yeah. Well, I don't have an O in my name. True. I didn't, yes. didn't consider Good job. that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Congratulations. Okay, so, uh, as you can tell by our namey things, uh, they talked a lot about the Xi'an language today, or this week in, uh, in Around the Verse. The alien languages, Vanduul and Xi'an, uh, special ATV. Um, first of all, CS, what did you think of them? Um, of both languages, or... Mm -hmm. or specific one i i think it's awesome um i mean learning more about how the vandal communicate is extremely interesting considering the fact that not only do they commute ver communicate verbally but they also communicate by changing the color of their of their skin and like their their bioluminescent um body like it's it's crazy to think that they've developed a sort of language that not only is separate from verbal but also can be used in conjunction like it's crazy like you know uh and the Xi'an you learn a lot about the fact that you know the whole is it Jean, Xi'an you know how is it said and actually having a specific reason for why people misinterpret that in the lore is really cool and it goes to show that they're actually like taking what's happened in the past couple of years from the community and interpreting lore and actually making something out of it so i think it was uh very interesting uh, as far as the episode's concerned, and I can't wait to see more. Uh, what were you saying with like the whole, um, you know, with the addition of like the bioluminescence and all like the gestures and all the, the things that make the Vandu language kind of distinct to them? It's kind of interesting because it means that, in a way, it would be hard for like a human to be able to fully ever adapt and like adopt the Vandu language because they straight up don't have the, the correct biology to be able to like you know, implement the correct tone and inflection of certain things because stuff like that does, like, require the actual hardware, I guess. Mm -hmm. and it, so, like, there could be some basic communication because they do have verbal language, but, um, like, uh, to, you miss out context and stuff. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like from from Halo, uh, what are they, the Borics? Like, the, the tall... Um, blue dudes that usually carry the swords. What are they? What are their species? What is their race? I don't remember what they are. Yeah, but, but, but you guys know what I'm talking about, though. The guys that usually hold the swords and stuff, yeah. and they go. Argh! So those guys, like their mouth opens in four directions, and they have to like, <laughs> like reading the books. It's interesting hearing them talk because they have. It's it's, they're not designed that way. So, it's kind of that way for um, brutes. Okay, yes, thank you, Nitro. So uh, they have like a predator mouth. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, so they're designed to like kill things and like, but talking like a human is really hard for them. But like Arbiter, he figured it out. So, uh, now, Stormy, mm. as our mistress of fiction, uh, do you think that now that we are knowing, like, we're starting to find out a bit more about the languages and what kind of influences the languages and things like, uh, the Vandal communicate through bioluminescence and stuff, do you think that'll start expanding into? fiction and changing how people because we haven't really known how to write stories based on an alien point of view so far because they haven't really given us much do you think we'll start being able to expand into new viewpoints for fiction i hope so like this this is the i i had a big problem with the way that this entire uh episode was was what's the word um when it was released, everybody had a bit of a knee-jerk reaction about it. For people like me, it's interesting because I write. I like the lore. The lore is important. The lore is what makes the game. But we had so much kickback about, oh, where's my 3.0 crap? And it's just like, 
the like 2.6 just kind of came out not long ago and i understand people want gameplay they want to see mechanics and all that but there is no game with no lore and that's the biggest thing that i try to push out there is the fact that without the lore there is no game because there's no backstory game devs rely on the lore team for everything for any kind of consistency so for them to get stuff like this out there to me is very important so it helps expand that universe yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, one of the things you see a lot in games is that, or in pretty much anything, one of the problems with Star Wars or Star Trek or any of those is like any any other races, they end up speaking human, right? And mm -hmm. I'm kind of hopeful that you're going to encounter Jian or Vandul and just not be able to understand them. It'll be interesting to see how they have that in game, though. Is this something that you're actually going to have to maybe learn something to try and understand them? Or are they going to have like close cap on it where, you know, they'll have subtitles every time you actually come across an alien that you have to speak to? Or will they do it like Final Fantasy 10? No. 12? I can. I don't remember which that like. As you found the letters, they'd show up in the subtitles. Yeah, it it's kind of like No Man's Sky, where when you fit, when you learn language, you actually understand what what they are. But no, they they specifically said that you can get translators that will translate them for you. But obviously, they're going to be a hard to find or b really expensive. So people could just learn the language. You know, this means this, this means that, and kind of piece together how to actually communicate with them. So. It was kind of interesting because, like, um, if you actually listen to this whole talk, um, oh, uh, Britain, what was the guy's name? Um, Watkins. Britain Watkins. Britain Watkins. Um, so he's like he's fluent in actually a whole bunch of crazy languages. Uh, yeah, Klingon, he just started uh, Navi, talking Navi. Uh, yeah, Navi. Um, and then like uh, he he created his own language for a, a, a film that he was working on, but um. Uh, he was talking about Klingon a little bit, and I actually didn't know this. Uh, so apparently learning Klingon, it really isn't learning a real language, because like Klingon is kind of like, they, they kind of cheated yeah. a little bit. Uh, so essentially they just like, they'd write out the lines of the script in English, and they'd just make up words to like, like a Klingon counterpart for this word, right? Yeah. They didn't create like a basic language and move forward um, like they're doing here. So, like, uh, essentially, they were just kind of, like, scrambling English to make it sound weird. And then, like, using the same sound over and over again to make it, like, kind of cheesy doodle. Uh, it was essentially just they were encoding it. That's all they were doing. Um, and to try to pass it off as a language, which worked. It worked well. But um, it wasn't an actual language. Um, mm -hmm. Ground up. Which is kinda cool. I, was, I always thought Klingon sounded a little bit like German. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably sounds. there's probably some inspiration there. It's, it's supposed to sound language. angry, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I I am looking forward to being able to actually utilize languages in the game because there's really not many games at all that actually get you invested in having to figure out language because there's always a cop out like yeah like subtitles like. That's that's great. Like I I watched a film the other day. It it did have subtitles, but um, being able to actually like just hear the language and how it's supposed to be instead of having it like dubbed as something else or or like you were saying, like everyone speaks English and like you know the alien races in yeah. Star Trek. You know, like it just kind of takes away from it. So weird fact. Oh, I watch I, absolutely just everything. Just school with... too. <laughs> I watch absolutely everything with subtitles because, uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of other languages and subtitles, real quick, I'm just gonna hop in here. I'm super hyped for the new Zelda right now. Yes. And I'm 100% gonna be playing it in Japanese. Yep. With subtitles. If you go listen to those trailers, the Japanese voice acting is so much better. I, I don't more. understand actually something about that. Like, Zelda's typically made up their own language and never had actual voice acting, and I'm not sure it's if good. I like that. So, I'm probably going to go with Japanese and English subtitles just so that it feels more Zelda like. Sorry, this is Zelda, it, it, not. It, it, it does sound more. I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. It sounds actually like, if you think about it, 
the 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 actors that were making like grunts and noises and gibberish noises were Japanese. Yeah, you know. So like, like, <laughs> I, I the Japanese one sounds more Zelda y. I guess I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Star Citizen. Um. Where I was gonna say. Uh. Actually, no. Here's a question I have. Um. Do you think that CIG should just straight up give us the way to learn, like, the the language lexicon for these alien languages before the game comes out or when it comes out? Or, like, will people have to figure it out themselves? Well, they've said that they're going to. Um, yeah. Like, in this video, yeah. uh, he, he actually mentioned, like, uh, like the, all the codecs and the, and the proper tools will be published for that stuff. Yeah. They, um, they, they um, want people to, like, to actually would, be able to do it. Because that would, honestly, like, if, if I had to figure it out, I wouldn't bother. Like, it would just be so much work. But actually having a template and being going, okay, I can actually learn it. Kind of, even If it's not even ahead of time or at launch, like, just actually have something. It, it encourages you a lot more than having to, because, like, No Man's Sky or whatever, like, having to learn the language on the go. Like, that was really, I mean, that was the content of the game. But at the same time, it's like. But to be fair, if someone, some people are geared that way, where putting in that amount of work, and then once you actually get to that, where it's like, I now can understand it or speak it or or read it fluently, that's an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I think there's actually going to be a, like a little bit of light fluency um, when it comes to just like people who are big to the game. I mean, because like, um, if you play enough and you're in dialogue, <clears throat> and you see like, uh, you hear like. You hear some noise for like the fiftieth time, and you know you know in Jean that that translates to "I'm gonna fuck you up." Um, you're like, <laughs> oh, uh, this is turned bad, right? Like you you, you kind of know that, or like like that's the Jean word for weapon, or that's the Jean word for ship. You know, people are gonna have a light library of that stuff, um, like moving forward if you're if they're big into the game, uh, and, and that's the kind of thing that they're kind of doing in the universe that people will kind of have that in their brain somewhere um but like uh, the people who there will be someone who like really bears down and learns that thing and whoever it is is gonna be it's gonna be good <laughs> to be oh, honest though if an alien was growling at you looking angry wouldn't you go the other way but it, it could stand be there it could and be, wait to be understood <laughs> it, it could be that's exactly how they communicate in the peaceful way like the vandu they could be like <laughs> And it's like it's hello. I don't know. I mean, like, like at the beginning of that video, um, uh, oh god, I forgot the guy's name, um, but it, it's a uh, it's, it's the uh, the black actor who's playing Patrice? the Von, the Vondel Prince. He's playing P Patrice, Prince this is his name. N something. It's just the N. A prince. It's, it's, he's like a Vondel leader prince man. Yeah. Um, is like the character he's playing, and. Uh, like, who knows what he's saying? Maybe he's like, bring me grapes. Uh, <laughs> like, you don't know who knows what he's saying, you know? Like, what, what, what do Vondul snap I on? would like a milkshake. Yeah, exactly. Like, who knows? Maybe maybe he's just a spoiled brat. He doesn't want to hurt anyone. He's, he's a wimp. He's a Vondul wimp. He's royalty. He's spoiled. Maybe mm -hmm. all Vandul show up and they're like, would you like to see my wares? And we're like, ah, and start shooting them and... Dude, check out my awesome spaceship! It's like glowing red and shit. Oh no, what are you doing? No, that's yeah, that happens constantly. It's it's bad. And and Andy Circus, he's just like casually like, oh yeah, there's you know, you make these sound, and he's just making the sound like, like he's just he already knows the language. Like it's like yeah, damn, he's, he's good. You're also talking about an actor who did King Kong, Gollum, and like umpteenth other, you know, it's, it's non what he does. species. Yeah. Dude, my claws taste really good. Let me just stick them in your face. No, wait, no, I'm not trying to, oh. no. So, let's, so let's I have to on. mention this. Oh. I'm sorry, David. No, so no fast problem. No. said to me, and he's like, it depends on the alien. He said, if an Ewok growled at me, I'd want to hug it. <laughs> That's true. Very true. He has a point. <laughs> but, there, no, because, look, here's the thing. Ewoks are cute and cuddly. No one is denying this. But you have to consider the fact that they they try to cook and fucking eat people. You know what? You like, know what they remind it's me of? Mildly well, horrific. Well, they they ne ne have you ne seen? Um, one said they'd eat them. Oh, what's that? What's that stupid movie? With, you don't burn with someone Alan. to death unless you're gonna eat them. You, look, look. If you're Sorry, gonna burn someone to death, listen, what's, listen. If you're gonna burn someone to death, you, just well, to, just to burn to death, you you tie them to a stake vertically. 
if you're gonna cook them, you turn them horizontally like a spit. So you Are get you even saying cooked. this from experience? Yes. Maybe, maybe they he thought they thought they were cold. So David, you have to give more than what's that movie called to us? It's it's the one with the guy and the girl, and it's got the guy who played Snape. The yes. guy and the girl. Alan Rickman. Yes. Alan Rick yes. Alan Rickman. Okay. There's, uh, okay, so we know that there's a male and a female, and Alan Rickman. What about it? Like, just keep going. Galaxy Quest. Oh, that one. That Tim That's Allen. Good. Yes, Tim Allen. There we go. If you have, if you've seen Galaxy Quest, and they come up on these cute little space creatures that they all think are really cute they look like ewoks and then they bare their teeth and try and att that's what the ewoks would have done if they would got far enough they would have eaten them all no Dude, you like, don't know that it, it, they didn't ewoks eat princess are Leia. A warrior race they they tried to take out they, they can't successfully take out eight like like an AT -ATs. AT -AT yeah they they, they successfully atst yeah. it, it is the st it is the st okay like those those things are powerful. Yeah. Well, just they're, remember, they're in a warrior race, and they consume the flesh <laughs> of their enemy, so they're imbued with soul power. Clearly, Sarah, have you not read the extended universe? I've actually always liked the theory that the reason the stormtroopers can't hit anything is because they've actually been ordered not to. They've been ordered to miss, so that, well, because no, they've they're been ordered their guns by Vader are just to crap. miss. Their guns are just crap. Except the one guy. What was his no, Apparently someone that, figured out his name. Because they miss a lot, and then eventually they hit. It's because like, because they're getting to the... Like, you have to let... Because in the first movie, they wanted them to escape so that they could lead them to Hoth, right? If they didn't mm -hmm. get away, they'd never know where Hoth was. So you don't want to kill them. You want them to escape, lead you to the rebel base, and then destroy the rebel base. And look at yeah. them destroy the rebel base. They did that... With much ease and alacrity. Um, but they knew they were being tracked. <laughs> you disgust me. This is such a, like, conspiracy now. Like, we need to get back with them. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> well, I did... well, welcome to uh, welcome to the Relay Station. We are a Star Wars <laughs> podcast. That hey, Star Wars. About Ewoks. Recently, that's actually possible again. Star Wars has come back enough it's to the bad. Point. It's fucking terrible. Fuck Star Wars. I actually went and saw Rogue, Rogue One. Rogue One is it's... excellent. Uh, I, 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 haven't, okay. I haven't seen it yet. I, I won't say any spoilers. But Star I, Rogue One I, is a bad film. And I, I told Canadian Serb I loved and I hated it. So. Well, you loved and hated uh, A New Hope. So. Rogue or, One sorry, is... Force Awakens. No, no, no. Force Awakens. Rogue One yeah, is my favorite Star Wars film. But Han Solo died. It's bad. Well, some people may have not known that, so I probably wouldn't have said that. David, it's, it's name been all the main characters right if now. If you haven't seen it, that's your problem. Oh, name all the main characters. List them right now. No. For, oh, okay, we got a technical thing. Let's, let's go. They're not memorable. Let's get back to Star Citizen. So, this week was kind of a special Around the Verse episode, right? Uh, it really only focused on the one topic. Right? Yes. That's kind of different than they normally do. Do we prefer this format or not? Special no. edition. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, I don't the, prefer the, the the pace that they have fallen into with like the new ATV format was excellent, and the, the, we were getting consistently good ATVs from that. Every few, every every so once in a while, there'd be kind of a one, but like they had been consistently good, and like I hope they go back to that format. Actually, I do want to take the time right now because. A fair number of people watch us and listen to us for some reason. Uh, whether you like or don't like what CIG are doing with their community stuff, they need to know. Um, the only way that they can make things better or keep doing the things that you like is if they get told so. Now, they watch Reddit, they listen to podcasts, they keep an eye on what we're saying. But, like, if you see a Reddit thread about Around the Verse and you like Around the Verse, and you like where it's going and what they're doing, throw it in an upvote, throw in a positive comment, let them know that you like what they're doing, or if you don't like it, throw in some positive, like some constructive feedback, let them know what you want to change. They can only do that if we tell them. It's the community's responsibility to push for like the level of 
interactivity we want with CIG and the form that that takes. Yes. Like, CIG has, like, they have agreed that they are going to be very interactive with us. And, like, they have been for years. Um, what form, and we know that they're very flexible when it comes to that. They've tried new shows, the throw old shows out. They're very, very flexible and just trying to figure out something that works for the current state of the community. And fun fact, you dictate what that current state is. Yep. So you pushing for what you want to see is you will it will ha- it will make something happen. Mm-hmm. And constructive criticism is the best forum. You know, like there's people I say, "Oh, this episode was shit." Okay, why? Why? Yeah. Why? And, and then how when can people, they fix it? And then some people are like it's shit because no 3.0. Okay, that has the absolute same thing to do with the lore makers or the yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's it's just. Constructive criticism would be, I didn't like this episode as much as others because it only focused on one topic. And while an in-depth look into one topic is nice, especially, I mean, I understand it as it's their first week back from the vacation. We like to have a bit more of a broad overview of what's going on rather than an in-depth look at one specific topic. I like, understand yeah. that, but at the same time, you have to look at it from the point of view that someone like me, who I could care less about game mechanics, but mm-hmm. stuff about lore, that interests me. We don't get as much about that stuff as we do about game mechanics, gameplay, etc., etc., etc. So, to throw people like me who enjoy the lore and the backstory once in a while, you at least have to give us that. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, that, it's, it's, what they're saying is true. That's I what constructive really like feedback would look like. Like I, I'm actually, I'm actually very happy that they're maybe doing more deep, deep dives, dives yeah. now. Because like, when was the last time they did something like this? Not not about language, but just about like a, a deep dive on a topic like this. Well, one of the like, things... you're, are you speaking specifically about something that isn't a targeted show like Bug Smashers or Lore Makers, right? Yes, or, like, or... like about yeah, like like one specific element. Well, we also haven't had design documents in a long time. The exactly. Reason... Well, and the reason behind that is pretty simple. It's you can't really do a design document until the thing that you're go- you've designed is ready or else if look at what happened when they showed us the simple radar mechanic the simple golf swing radar mechanic that was their work in like it's what they were thinking about for one ship only and everyone immediately like lots of people got really angry saying that that's too simple for a carrick and getting all up in arms and from their perspective it's like no we never like this was this is what it would look like in a hornet like let us so it's i i actually think part of that was because it it, the deep dive itself was half-assed like um and i think a lot of the problems kind of occur when they half say things um and so if if they just said like Hey, and we're working on radar mechanics, and there's like two seconds of like a thirty second clip of radar stuff. Like, you no know, work in progress, work on radar mechanics, right? I don't think it would be a problem, but instead it was kind of like a more like a five minute little talk on radar mechanics. But it wasn't like a thirty minute thing where where the, they will, there would have been a directly said like, hey, these are just like small tier radar mechanics where we are working on more advanced things for bigger ships and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, th- that would have fixed a lot of that communication issues. So like. It's hard to find like that that slot, right? Because like on, they're on the on the long side of it, they don't have that problem. That's hard to produce. And on the short side of that is like, yeah, but then you're kind of like skipping through content too fast, almost. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, CS, I want to ask you about the new show this week. Before we get into questions, which are soon, let's talk about Happy Hour. Oh, happy hour. The thing that people at first were like, oh my god, why is there TV? You've ruined everything. It's going to be shit. Oh, hey, it actually turned out not to be too bad. It's pretty happy. That's the one. Um, yeah. You know, happy hour, uh, I liked it. Um, it definitely was uh, soul first. And for anyone who hasn't seen it, happy hour is their community um, kind of live gameplay stream order for about an hour. So what they do is they go on to the Star Citizen live servers and they actually go and play with random people. Uh, And then they'll feature, I guess, either some devs or they'll have uh, a streamer. So they had... um, Meyer. Meyer, yeah. Meyer was the the guest streamer today. Or not today, yesterday. 
And then they had Todd Pappy and uh, Alex Marshall from Frankfurt because everyone was there for the, the, the production meetings or whatever and, that they have. Uh, Pappy, Pappy is a design director and uh, the other one is a producer, correct? Yeah, he, he used to be a senior... I forget what he was, but I guess he was prom promoted to producer because his role changed or whatever. But anyways, yeah, so they're both high-level folks. And so they... Uh, they came in about 20 minutes in, but before that, it was generally just Disco, Tyler, and Meyer just playing with the community, which is fine. Um, it was just a bit kind of a, a bit of a lull. But then when Todd Pappy came in uh, with Alex, it definitely kicked up a lot. And, uh, you know, there was some good gameplay, some good questions answered, and just a good atmosphere. Uh, but up to that point, it was pretty pretty like yeah but they were just getting their feet you know just figuring out how how it was going to go but no it was it was good if i had to choose between this rtv i would choose this because uh, there can be some moments in rtv where it's like uh, but pretty much for the most part you could watch gameplay if there was a question you weren't quite interested in or whatever so it was kind of um a mix of both so to be fair, a new show that comes in is usually always greeted a little bit lukewarmly, right? Because yeah, they don't yeah, really the know what exactly is going to happen. They have an idea, but execution isn't always on, on spot. Yeah. 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 So let's just look at some of the the highlights of information from the, the happy hour. Um, 2.6.1 is being worked on. Uh, they're going to be coming out with a schedule like we saw for 2.6.0 sometime in the next week or two. Now, is that for 2.6.1 schedule or is that the 3.0 and the Squadron 42 schedules that we were also promised? Do we know? Just just 2.6.1 and then after that, they will. They said they will do the, uh, the 3.0. Um, 2.6.1 is going to have some necessary tweaks for Star Marine and just some general gameplay uh performance increase and stuff like that so uh, they um, actually mentioned directly that there are some things that um there are some things that um got left out of 2.6 on like a technical yeah because they didn't level. they didn't make it in time for for 2.6 it was they was cut out and so they'll, they'll put those in for for it yeah. so um so Blood in zero G will exist, uh, but there's other things that take priority first over that. Uh, there's a ballistic sniper rifle in the works. They're designing different ammo types so that firing a different type of round makes a difference in what armor you're wearing. Uh, they're saying that. that what, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that one's actually really cool because they kind of went into. Uh, you know, when you're building your armor, because we know that you're going to be able to customize your armor. A lot like yeah. you can be able to choose you know you want a heavy helmet you may want a medium chest or light legs why would you ever do that is beyond me um but you could affect how your character like it's not just you have light medium heavy you know you can actually mix and match in them and that'll actually affect your attributes overall because heavy armor you're really slow light armor you're really fast but you don't have as much um uh, protection and so giving a lot of variety to people in not only what armor they can wear but what they want to defend themselves against you know they were talking about when you're on a planet you know you want to have more uh, biological protection you know radiation or or thermal but then that might come with the reduction of you know ballistics you know you may get easily penetrated by those uh, something against lasers etc and so they really went in depth on how you could really customize that uh, from just, yeah, um, uh, they, just, just the ammo types alone. So they also apparently cool. talked about the difference, the a bit of the differences in the armors. Uh, it's not mm. been approved by Chris yet, but Todd wants it so that light armor is fast and mobile on ground, um, whereas heavy armor is fast and mobile in EVA. Um, mm -hmm. Because I like it can that. equip better thrusters. I I do actually have a concern about this in that right now light armor seems useless yeah why why though um because you die instantly yeah no um, but okay okay to be fair put this into perspective if you're playing a sniper and you're hiding wouldn't heavy armor hinder you it would but unless you're sniping wait, in right right now with light armor you get one weapon slot with medium armor you get two, and they've with said light armor. If you are playing a sniper, though, you only need one gun. Not really. 
It's it's I'm I'm a bit concerned <clears throat> about the way that they're going to take armor. Um I've I've been concerned honestly since they said that only heavy armor would be able to carry sniper rifles. Now I believe they've finally they've gone back on that, but that is something that they had said a long time ago and that really to no. be fair, though, it all comes down to play style, right? Yeah. Like, when I play any FPS, and anybody who I've played with FPS will no will notice that I tend to favor one weapon. I usually don't switch. Now, I've actually been thinking about this, David, and I, I share your concerns with that. Um, after some thought, I think, actually, I know where the balance comes, right? Um so, you know, think about it that way. It's like, why would anyone ever use anything other than heavy armor? Yeah. Right? Um, well, he, he, I, I figured out why. Well, it, because in the universe, people who are kind of like playing on their own aren't going to be able to. Um, like, you know, you can't pilot a ship in heavy armor. Yep. Uh, you maybe can in medium, maybe not. Uh, and you can in light armor. But, um,. <clears throat> But, like, uh, so, you know, if you're on your own, you're rolling around the Hornet or whatever, you're going to be in a flight suit or you're going to be in very light armor. Um, you're not going to be in medium or heavy armor. Um, if if you are, you're going to be in something like like a Starfarer or a bigger ship with a crew, and you're not going to be doing anything on the ship. You're going to be the, the gun guy, right? And so it is maybe a little fair for you to have better equipment, like, by default, and so for the, maybe someone else that you're ambushing or you're being ambushed by would have to stop, change into an actual combat focused suit to be able to do that. Um, I, just... I, I, I think that like the added bonus by it, if it's not super significant, which I'm hoping, it's okay if there is a like a added con com combat bonus to it. Um, you gotta remember that you also have to carry this armor, you have to maintain this armor. Um, you ha you have to you know have somewhere to store it. You know maybe you can't store heavy armor in a freelancer locker yeah. or a or you can't store heavy armor in a constellation locker maybe you need something like a military focused vessel like a vanguard to be able to like who which is designed around more combat focused things maybe you know that's mm -hmm. the thing you need um i i guess i kind of worry that everyone will just wear medium armor yeah and i i do think that's a problem and i think that at the end of the day will come down to balance um mm -hmm. And, it, 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 and I, I do think there is something to be said for limiting uh, how you can store and, and transport various types of armors. Because it's like, like if, if for instance, like, you know, like you have your freelancer, uh, not your freelancer, I'm sorry, uh, your Hornet, right? And like, I'm, I'm going to go do a mission on a planet, and I'm rolling down to this planet, and I, I land on the procedural planet, I hop out. There is some storage area in the Hornet. Um, it's just not, it, it's for weapons and armor, things like that. It's not for actual cargo cargo right um so maybe i do have my heavy armor in my storage unit i'm in my flight suit by default i land my planet and i actually have to go around to the back of the thing pop open the storage unit change it to my heavy armor stick the flight suit in there and then i can go do this mission and but if like maybe if i'm under fire if i have to eject i'm not going to have that ready to go it, it, it's, it's a multi-step process but someone who was already like took the sacrifice of having it on them already and wasn't able to operate a ship or ship components and stuff like that, maybe they would actually be able to, you know, pull something off like that. I, I think, like, I do think there's something to be said for balancing that stuff out with the ability to, like, maintain and travel with these things. And, like, like the transportation of armor is actually something you have to think about when it comes to balancing those things. Yes. Um, was there anything you wanted to add, David, before I... Continue. No, no, go for air. Do it. Um, yeah, so there's yeah, there's definitely points I agree with um, with Dolvac. The transportation of said armor is going to be a big factor uh, because not everything needs to be able to store that armor. The other thing too is, while Star Marine is a very good benchmark for balancing a lot of aspects of play, it's one thing to be said is that a lot of the engagements we're going to encounter in the PU won't be the same as we encounter in Star Marine. So one big example being, let's say we're out in the terrain. Let's say we're out in the desert, okay? 
having heavy armor is going to be a massive detriment because you're open, you're exposed, you're this big, slow-moving target. Whereas in your light armor, you're well able to move around, scout, and not to mention, probably have some sort of a stealth armor, which will even lower your, uh, your signature even lower. And so heavy armor is this big, bulky target. It's huge. It's obvious. So that's kind of one of the big things where... Yes, heavy armor in a close quarter situation, 100%. I, I agree. It's going to be dominant because that's where its main thing is supposed to be. But in a more open area, you're more susceptible to other types of armors, which we'll be able to maneuver, flank, and all those sorts of things. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they balance it. But I think they definitely have the right idea of how they're going about it. But we'll see. Yeah, and like the thing to remember... Um, is that uh, like like we, it just in our head with like how video games have taught us for years? You know, you think of light, medium, and heavy armor as like like okay, better, best, right? Like that's how you think of them as in, in terms. But um, really, it's just like different, different, and different. Like they're all mm -hmm. different, and that's how they should be. Like mm -hmm. you know, it, when you were bouncing a video game, things should never really be better. They should just be different, you know. Um, no, Star System doesn't have levels. It doesn't have these RPG mechanics. Um, things are just different. You're taking these. You're taking options and choices and drilling down, like to specific, uh, blah, 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 to specific things like that. Not actually like you know for stat bonuses. So like in a traditional RP, RPG, MMORPG, people will always obviously be running around the heavy armor because it's the best and it's the most defensive stats. But like maybe the sacrifices aren't worth it in a situation like this, and I think we have to kind of like rejig our thinking, and hopefully, CIG is thinking that way. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for certain things to be better and certain areas, like close quarters, heavy armor, you know, going against the light armor, absolutely. But then the light armor might be able to flank that heavy armor due to its mobility differences. So, but yeah, I think that's uh was there any let's see was there anything else that they talked about they talked about yes, weapons actually. a little bit the weapons were pretty cool uh well, oh yeah one of the things they talked about about weapons is actually how long it takes for a weapon a new weapon anyway to get uh, modeled and animated in the game which was saying it takes like what three weeks to a month to get a weapon modeled and in the game and animated well yeah, from start, start to finish yeah and then it takes the time after that to kind of like polish it up yeah but from like, like like start to to vaguely like okay this thing is like ready should be ish ready to go mm -hmm. um it like it works then yeah it's like a, it's like a month yeah and some people are like wow why does it take so long it's like you understand like these things are these weapons work like as a real weapon would like the charging handle the sights to mount the different scopes you want and actually the proper um dimensions for the person and, you know, it's like I mentioned, I replied in the one thread, is that more than likely the same classification of a weapon takes long, takes uh, less time than that one. Like, they don't have any SMGs. Once they have an SMG, the other SMGs within that manufacturer will go way quicker because yeah. they have that baseline. It's like the Drake ships. Caterpillar's done. Uh, it's like MISC. You know, How long is yeah, it or MISC. to throw out MISC ships now that the MISC baseline is done? Or mm -hmm. Yeah. And once they've added more weapons to their arsenal, like they said, like they're they're wanting to get the basics, they want to get the foundation so that they can easily go, oh, you want this variant, Pfft, done. You want this one, done. Ballistics, done. You know, all that stuff comes into play. So Just because they get... have to get the base assets finished first. Yeah. So it's you got to get the basics down before you can do the other stuff. So, but yeah, like ballistic sniper rifles, like the you know obviously lasers. Pfft, oh, hey, look, there he is. You know. <laughs> And like you know, as they move on and as they improve weapons, we're gonna get things that like not just makes like um, it's not just be like, oh, I, I I had this gun now I want this gun because it's different. Uh, it's gonna be like you know you're gonna be changing modular modules on you, the actual weapon itself, mm -hmm. and so it's gonna be like I'm gonna I'm gonna have this attachment. I'm gonna use this type of ammo right now. We just have one type of ammo. There's energy weapons, and then there's not energy weapons. There's ballistics. Mm -hmm. uh, there's gonna be multiple types of ballistics. You know, armor piercing, all all different types of, of different options for different situations and being able to like drill down and customize weapons more than just hey it's a, it's it's this ar or it's not or it's the laser gun mm -hmm. or whatever um, i mean so like, like we'll right, right now up fire right now, it's your cost gun. of of yeah exactly 
you know, because like like right now it's like, so yes, like your ballistic gun and my ballistic gun are exactly the same gun, mm-hmm. but down the line, I'm gonna I like I like this site, you like that site. You know, we're we're gonna be using different things, different setups, and uh, you know th- that's gonna be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And you, you could get invested in being that guy who's really good at customizing a certain sniper rifle a certain way that people may want, and there's a market for that. So, you know, it just, you go into that whole, like, traders, hey, big I, economy I there for you. I show up at someone's Endeavor, and they've got the Endeavor kitted out with the, you know, the spinny thing and all, all the stuff to, because the, the Endeavor is supposed to be the top at customizing weapons i want to show up at someone's endeavor they've got a hangar that you can land in and it's just wall to wall with weapons and you just go through and look at them and like i think that's cool i think that would be cool but and get some space drugs while you're there well yes um so we're, we're actually going to switch over to a different layout for uh the question period and in that layout there's going to be some new uh some images from this week that are going to be rotating a bit on the bottom um these came out of a i believe a game star uh magazine article that went up this week they look pretty cool i think and uh one other bit of news that we got from happy hour excuse me uh that we got from happy hour before uh before we get into questions Apparently, we're getting a new 10 for the chairman this week. Yeah, um, special edition. Yes. Quotes. So, who knows? I wouldn't consider it a, a permanent edition again. It's, it'll probably be like the last one he did, where it was like that hour-long episode, a quick Q&A. Now, mm-hmm. this is an idea I heard, and it's actually something that if, if everyone likes this idea, maybe we, we should, you know, push CIG to adopt something like it, of... Every month or every two months, a different type of 10 for, right? So this month, we get a 10 for the chairman. In March, we get a 10 for the designers. In May, we get a 10 for the developers. In July, we get another 10 for the chairman. Like, one of the problems yeah. was it was it was too hard to do a 10 for every week, right? Mm-hmm. And that ended up being the problem. But what if we stretched stretched it out, and every two months they did a deeper dive, and maybe not just questions, but a look at here's where we are in the game. I, I I'm yeah. totally on board with that, and like like even not just like like a ten for the chairman style thing. I'd actually be okay with in general a um like like some just some form of special edition, like like what they did with the alien languages. If like we were getting something like that every month, just on a different topic, I think that would be very powerful. Or, or you know, or instead of that, you know, they sat down with Chris Roberts for you know an hour and talked about some stuff. And I, I, I do think like something that breaks up the consistency. And it's like, hey, here's just something we just did this month because we thought it would be cool. Is um is impactful to the community and it it it, it keeps you excited. It's like, oh, okay, another ATV. I guess we're gonna see fucking Frankfurt with some ship shit. I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll see a screenshot of a planet. Like who knows, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, uh, like, it, there's a monotony to it when you go on for so long. And having something that's like who knows, it's kind of like the wild card show. I'd be okay with like the first week of the month, kind of being like a wild card. I think that'd be okay. It would just well, it would just pretty much just be like that special edition lore makers they did, where they actually sat down the entire lore yeah. team and and they yeah. had a bunch of Q and A and questions and stuff that regularly wouldn't be touched on in lore makers, which was really neat. Whenever we seem so. to get like non consistent content like this, like the lore makers thing, like the alien languages ATV, there always yeah. seems to be some form of like we always come away from it being like, oh yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Like that was that was all right. We got some cool stuff out of that. Um, and, and, like, I do think that stuff is, is pretty fun. Yeah, no, I, I agree that definitely having something, like, every two months or once a month, and it's actually the way they were wanting to do it, and I think why it didn't happen before was it just was still a little too early in that they, they wanted to have questions but able to answer them and also visually show the, what they're actually talking about as yeah. well, and so... I think that's maybe what they're waiting for is that when they get to a point where, you know, when someone asks, you know, How's the repair going? 
cool, okay, let me show you what it actually is looking like right now and talk about it and then their plans, but also actually show like work in progress stuff. So I think that's what they're really wanting to do. But yeah, rotating that is a very good idea because then it keeps it fresh, it keeps it different, it keeps it new. And, and it also, it's like ATV. Having it every week and having an update, we heard the same thing over yeah. and over again, which is, it makes sense because you can't get a meaningful difference between episodes in a week, yeah. you know, it just it's not going to happen. But when you give each studio a month to prepare actually what they've been doing, kind of like a monthly report, you're actually able to see so much more stuff in the long run. So and I think that was the really good change for them. And I yeah. wholeheartedly and uh, I, I it like good. that it would also break it up a bit more so that you're not taking three hours of Chris's time every week, right? Like you're mm -hmm. not taking X amount because they've, they've got a game to make, which is more important. Um, I my my most important thing here is again communication i think it's really important for us to see chris again because we don't see chris often enough and i know he's really busy making the game but he is also the one who promised us the game and i think i think we need to see chris more often and chris and tony and aaron and yeah like it or not he is the face of the game yes so let's get into some of these questions that you have asked by typing exclamation mark question the first exclamation mark question is, does this work? Yes, it does. The does second, what work? I don't know, but I'm okay. saying it does. Um, okay. The second exclamation mark question is, which would win in a fight, a hornet or a hummingbird? I actually... Hey, hummingbird's I, actually a cool name. I, I'd be okay with a hummingbird I, ship. I'd be okay with a hummingbird ship as well, actually. Like, is it, like we know we're, we're getting more like motorcycle, like dragonfly style stuff. Hey... The that's Miss totally... the oh. Miss Hummingbird. Miss Hummingbird. That. That's that's yeah. a nice name for a Misk ship. Yeah, I'll be okay so, with that. Would the next Drake ship be the Miss or not the Misk? The Drake Wasp. We have the Dragonfly. We have a. How ugly would Hornet. that ship be? The Wasp. They already. It's already yellow. They already have like the special yellow. They they couldn't get away yeah. with it. Yeah. Maybe it's a Wasp variant. Well, there's, our, there's not going to be variants. We already know that it's like colors. I don't think that would fly. Oh, ho, ho. I, oh. <laughs> oh, ha, ha. I'd like to see the RSI seagull. Um, I think that that's a very fitting. Uh, I'm an anvil pigeon man myself. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you didn't hear my ringtone there. Did, actually. Good job, like quality CS. My grandmother calling. I have a Mexican guy saying, It's your telephone! <laughs> Anyways. Um, <laughs> For your grandma. Uh, well, that's just because I know it's her name. How does Dolvac shave? Don't show us. No. Um, what is the Banu word for flight penis? Dude. Oh, can, no, 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 you. no, no. I'm not I can no. assure you that once we have Banu language, I, I will be very fluent. So don't it'll, don't it'll be the don't inside you joke. worry your little heart. Uh, don't you worry one bit. Also, put this out here: if someone wants to sponsor a tattoo of the word "flight penis" in an alien language, I, I will get it somewhere that is not seen during a job interview. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. If someone wants to pay for it, 100. percent I'll do it. You bottom my foot or something? I'm on board. That would hurt. All right. Well, what other questions do we have? Uh... Uh, the next question is, why can't David say concierge properly? I don't think there's a problem with how I say concierge, so really. <laughs> no, no th that's not the way you say it, though. It's concierge. No, Look, it's he's concierge. Canadian. He's Canadian. They're all fucked up there. Who knows, dude? Well, let me just, let okay. you just check his sk uh, schedule. Ke <laughs> schedule. You almost said schedule. You almost said, said schedule instead schedule. of schedule. It's schedule. See, no, we have this big thing where he, CS says schedule. He says that's the way it's supposed to be, and I said schedule, yet last night he said, I'll have to check my schedule. It's like Quay. Q. Quay. Q. Quay. Shiver, back or, me or, up on this. Or, or, or generic. No, it, it's it, absolutely Q. Uh, it's actually Quay. Um, shut your mouth. You shut your goddamn Anyways, mouth. Anyways, next David. question. Where are David's cats? One of them is... Excuse They're me. running away from his pronunciation. Last last time he had the kitties around, he scared the crap out of them. Here's one. Because he 
fell off his chair. He fell off his chair and he scared the two kitties. Actually, so dog, let's go back to this because you've seen those images a million times now. Here's one. This is Winston. Hello. Say hi, Winston. Say He's hi. got six toes. He does. Look at his paw. It's a giant paw. Winston. Everyone give hearts for Winston. Better see hearts in that chat. Winston. I'm going to be mad. Um, next. Six times seven. No idea. I can't math. That's uh, 42. Oh. That's fitting. Yeah. Um, sitcom plans. Not sure yet. I am hoping we can all go to sitcom this year. It is in Frankfurt. Airplanes are expensive. Try um, Regardless of whether we can make it there or not, it'll be transcribed and analyzed and everything as usual. And you can help out by going to patreon.com slash RelaySC. Uh, <clears throat> that was weird. I didn't know we had ads run on our show. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, uh. It'll probably be CS and I doing the transcribing because I don't think we're going. Ah. Uh. Germany's a long ways away. Oh, so, someone, if so, if as people help pay for it, sure. But uh, on our own incomes, no. Yeah. Even on mine, I my my cousin is doing an evil thing and getting married in Italy this year, which means I have to go. So you're going to Italy again? Yeah. You should but, have just saved yourself money and went that time. <laughs> yes, if I had known, that would have happened. Unfortunately. Moving on. We should we should have an extra funding goal where we will transcribe it in Gion. No, 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 no. No. But it would be an astronomically high number. No. It would be an astronomically high number. Forty thousand dollars and we'll transcribe all of Citizen Con in Gion. Because yes. guess who has to help you with that? For forty thousand dollars. Pretty good. Okay, okay, fine. If if, <laughs> if people get me to Germany, I'll do it. There you go. Um there you go. Do you think 2.7 slip was a mistake or an actual plan they haven't wanted okay, to tell so us? Okay, so there is an explanation for this. So, 3.0 doesn't exist. I'm just going to say that. 3.0 is bullshit. It doesn't exist. The name 3.0 is completely made up. So, they are jumping from 2.6 to 3.0, but not really. They are jumping from 2.6 to 2.7. Um... The 2.7 update was so large that they figured that it was worthy of a like a 1.0 to 2.0 ju style jump. So it, they're they're just simply calling it 3.0. It's just a rebrand. So internally, for months, they were referring to it. the The patch with procedural plants and the landing zones and all this stuff was always planned to be 2.7. But for it's simply it's marketing. It's marketing. Star Citizen 3.0 with procedural plants sounds better to someone who doesn't understand what's going on. It's true. Uh, that means, like, the general gaming community at large. So, um... I have a breaking news bulletin here from Jake Acapella. It, internally, internally it was referenced as 2.7, and it's probably just a slip in his brain. Six nipples. Moving okay. on. Uh, why is it so dark in Canadian Syrup's room, and does he have a heater on? Um, why is it so dark? Because I haven't changed the bulb and it's dying and I just haven't got around to it yet. And dude, two, is the heat dude. on? Do you e see my lighting yes. rig right now? Do you see my lighting rig? Hold on, so, hold on. Uh, what are you, oh, stop turning. Look at that. <laughs> ah, it's blinding. Thanks, because thanks, Solvac. If you look up there, up there, oh, I, I only have one bulb in my, in my fan right now. <laughs> That's so, how it should. That's how it honestly should be. Like people don't need like all the bulb, like all the bulbs, because that just wastes energy. No, so it's literally just like I'm too lazy to replace the bulb, so I took my lamp. I I just took the shade off, and it's right here. I'm using light. the power of the sun. I could open my blinds too, but I'm so, do you see what happens to my green screen when I turn this thing off? Oh, look at that! Yeah. And I know CS has heat. It's just one of these things where he thinks that five degrees above zero is like minus 30. I mean... Um, there. Do Vanduul need towels? Everyone needs a towel. You can never leave house without towel. Towel is safety. It's garbage. 
Um, what is it about forms that make me only ask silly questions? You're a silly person. Um, who's getting Jian or Vanduul calligraphy tattooed on them? Dolvac. I've already been there. I prefer yeah. Banu, but I'll take Jean because I can pass it off as Chinese. Here's an actual question, which we've had surprisingly oh, few of today. What are your expectations for Squadron? Now we're going to go around and do the whole circle-y thing. So, Dolvac, what are your expectations for Squadron? So, like, this isn't this isn't a very elaborate question. Does this mean time frame, quality, um, uh, I believe things he's that we're going to see? I believe the questioner, they are leaving that to your own discretion. As an expert in what it is that you do, um... <laughs> okay, so, okay, so, time frame, I, I believe that we are going to see Squadron 42 this year. I do not believe it is going to be until the last second. Um, I, I believe, rather, I believe it's going to be until, like, up at the edge of, of 2017. Um, I, I think that, I don't think CIG can afford the PR hit of not getting out in 2017, especially when, for the past few weeks, they've been saying, Squadron 42 is coming in 2017, if it, like, like no buts about it. Agreed. Um, they're, well, they might survive, like, the rage of the community, like, simply how they would appear to the gaming community at large would not be very good. Yeah. And so I think even if it's buggy, even if they have to cut some shit and edit it and fix it later, it, it, it's going to come out this year. Um, <clears throat> this is, it, they kind of have to. Um, now, from a quality standpoint, uh, honestly, who knows? Um, you know, like, you know, from the tidbits that, like, we've kind of, like, heard in rumors, um, there, there's some really cool stuff. And, like, some of the stuff that I have like illuminati out of CIG people uh, on occasion. Um, <clears throat> sounds Make it really, sound really like cool. an inquisition. <laughs> Small, just a little bit. But um, like, the, there's actually some really cool stuff, and some of the scenes in Square Enforcer 2 are really kind of fun. Um, and sp spoiler alert, that whole script that leaked wasn't... A lot of stuff wasn't in that, and like... It, it wasn't at all, like... There's, a, there's some cool stuff waiting for you down the line. And I, I, I don't even know half of it. So, um, I, I, personally, I am pretty excited for Squadron 42. Um, I, I backed for Squadron 42. I'm totally on board with awesome space MMO. Um, but, uh, like, took me up. But, um, like, what, what brought me to the project was, like, a new wing commander. So, at, at the end of the day, I am, I, I'm pretty happy. Uh, Stormy, what do you think? See, expectations is a bit of a funny word in that I have zero expectations for it. As in, I'm probably one of the few people that is just like, it'll come out when it's ready and not before, and I'm fine with that. So, the most that I can tell you what I'm most excited about, though, is just the entire whole story aspect to it. I'm the type of, of, of gamer that kind of likes following the storyline as well as having the challenging aspects to it as well so when it will come out who knows i have no prediction on that cs oh um <laughs> such a big sigh it's definitely a project that i've been excited for for a long time there's not many single player games out there that really grab my attention and actually pull me into the story it seems to be a very hard thing to do for a lot of developers nowadays because there's so much out there but at the same time they're not really putting in the effort to really get people involved in the game and I think Squadron 42 is one of those games where it's either going to do it really well or it's going to fall flat on its face and so I'm hoping that it will do well am I confident that it will yeah I'm pretty sure that they're going to pull through knowing Chris and and uh and how he's kind of laid out not to mention Dave Haddock and the writers and and the stuff he's done and and what they've shown I think it's going to be good um, as far as gameplay wise, um, uh, I mean, it should be fun. It should be good from what we've already played now, uh, when it will actually release. I'm, I'm probably betting late summer. Someone said before citizen, uh, not citizen con, uh, gamescom. That's a pretty good guess. Um, it really comes down to 
how the AI comes along. I think that's the biggest thing that's going to hold up if it was to be any aspect of the project. It would be the AI because network aside, or sorry, networking, you don't need to worry about it. It's a single player game. It doesn't affect it whatsoever. But the AI is the most crucial part because that is what's going to make it seem like a living, breathing, single player campaign the way they've advertised it. So if they can get the AI fixed and uh, to the way they want it to, then there's nothing really that's going to stop this game from being successful. So, Yeah. Um, that's my two cents. I expect it to come out this year. I expect it to come out before the end of the year. I don't think it's going to be a last minute thing. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be one of those, let's hit the button on December 23rd to go because it's something that they're going to need to do an advertising campaign. They're going to need to uh, build up more traditional hype. They're going to need to get gaming media involved in. I could see it launching around something like Gamescom. I'm still expecting like July, August ish, hopefully. Uh, well, we'll you got to remember, you got to remember that like building up that hype and marketing campaigns and stuff aren't actually mu like mutually exclusive with like an, a very end of the year launch. It's it's just easier if they plan like it's easier if they're like in building this hype. This is the launch date. Like we are ready. This is the launch date, and then they can build the hype, and then they can build the. I think anyway. Uh, as to any expectations of the game itself, I have absolutely none. The last game that I had, the last single player game that I had expectations for was Fable Three. I've seen how having expectations for a game. Uh, leads me can, to bad places. Can be disappointing. <laughs> yes. Fuck all video games forever is what we're saying. I have no expectations. Read a game. book! Get it out of here! What are you doing? You should read a book. Stop! <laughs> Go read a book. Dude, it's awful here. Just stop. They're not fun anymore. I hate them. Next, I next question. Them. I want to play the Mario games and I don't know why next I'm in this question. dark place. How do you There's pronounce spaceships. Herb? Herb. Herb. What? Herb. Herb. H E R B. How do you pronounce herb? Herb. 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 Are you herb. an herbivore? If, I, if I'm being if I'm being snarky, it's herb. It's a you're a herbivore. Herb. You eat. But no, it, it's, it's herb. herb. Um herb. next question, who submitted all the questions this week? It was me. No. Uh, I don't know. It was Shiver. It was shiver Bathroom. It's always Shiver. Uh, yeah. Here's a good one. Um, okay. Have you seen the GameStar translation on Reddit? Not yet. I'll have to look at that. Uh, in it, Chris says every major item, including player placed items and buildings, will be persistent. That sounds impossibly insane to me. Elder Scrolls games are notorious for ha having ballooning save files due to this. Thoughts? Okay. So, this is very interesting. So, looking at the file size thing, uh, you gotta remember that, like, th these things are not joined. Because of, like, the Elder Scrolls stuff and, like, all that persistence, th that is not how Star Citizen is being built. Yeah. Um, if you actually, like, go and listen to uh, a lot of, like, the early tech talks on procedural planets, um, okay, if you've ever played Minecraft, or early versions of Minecraft, how the Minecraft procedural world is generated is generated in things called chunks, right? Um... And they're essentially these like these square grids of, of a slice from like the skybox all the way down to the bottom of the world, um, and then it, it, it generates each of these and links them together, and they go out infinitely. And as you move out, it generates more and more and more chunks. Um, and so um, it, it, there used to be a glitch back in the day where you could find a chunk that didn't load properly, and it would just be an empty chunk from it would be a chunk error of just like nothingness. From all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. It's just like this fucking void. Um, it was kind of weird. Um, it's kind of gone now because they kind of like they've reprogrammed that game fifty times now. Um, but um, that's kind of how the procedural plants and star system work. Kind of. So um, everything. The, the every sizes. Of, the size of the plants. The sizes of the plants are significantly too large to be to to be loaded on your computer at one time. And it's just fine, because you can't see the entire planet at one time. Um, and so use of LODs, so while, like, while you're on the planet, you are on from horizon to horizon. That is a chunk loaded. And uh, the chunks aren't small little chunks like Minecraft, they're large chunks of area. 
Um, but like like you are on this chunk of the plant, and as you move, you are unloading things behind you and loading stuff in front of you. Um, and it's procedurally generating from a seed on your computer. And so when you think about file size, it's actually not that significant because literally all you have to have on your computer is like like the data for like these the buildings themselves, right? And like the building types. And then all you're doing is whenever you're loading a new chunk, all you have to do, the server just has to tell you, hey, here's the coordinates of this building. This building's here. And then your client's going to load that. Yeah. Um, so when you're talking about file size, uh, that's not really an issue. And ballooning file size isn't something that's really going to be happening with Star Citizen. That stuff happens on the server. Server side. And and it just gives you the data that you need at that given moment. Yep. And it's not going to be really an issue um, because the storage is cheap, man. And they can have 20,000 gigabytes of that stuff. And it, that's not even a lot. Um that's pretty reasonable for like server databases and every single um, item in the game is going to have its own unique um id because they've okay. they moved to 64 one of the moves to 64 the, the, those two things are not exactly mutually exclusive but you are correct yeah. um it's yeah uh so let's go to the next one uh, was it difficult for Dolvac to reintegrate back into society? I don't know. I'll let you know when he's actually integrated. Oh, um, wait, hold on. I have something for this. Wait. Wait for it. Hold on. Wait. Where is it? Hold on. Wait. Let me find it. This is part of his integration process. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, humans. <laughs> 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 I am a normal earth boy. Okay. Such boy humor, because I'm the only one not laughing. <laughs> laugh, Sarah. You won't I demand you laugh. You won't make me laugh. Next question. What will Dolax Banu Tramp Stamp say? <laughs> Next question, around in order. Uh, Dolvac, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh. I was gonna say something fucked up, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. so You're stopping now? Yeah, I was, I don't know, I went to a dark place in my head just there. Don't it, Ignore me. Stormy? What was the question? What's Sorry. your favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, she laughed! Should we? I said Dolvac couldn't make me laugh. Oh, I didn't right. say you. Okay, say again. What Sorry. is everyone? What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Hands down, mint chocolate chip. That's a good choice. The green kind, not the white kind. Oh yeah, yeah. Here, it has to be green. I mean, it's not real. Or okay, I'm kind of, kind of torn too because Canadian serves some, it makes some amazing vanilla too. No, good, good old vanilla is good, man. Like, no, yes, he, he makes homemade vanilla though. Yeah, good old-fashioned vanilla. Yes. If you're gonna eat some but, pie with some ice cream, you have oh, to have sorry. you have to have vanilla. But mint chocolate chip is probably one of my favorites. CS, what's yours? Judy vanilla. Said vanilla. Okay. Vanilla. Just good old vanilla. Uh, if I had to pick a close second, it would be black cherry. But you're vanilla. You're all wrong because ice cream sucks. Uh, Lemon gelato. You are not normal. You are yes, lemon, no. lemon normal. gelato is. But, but how a, are we wrong? A if what you're, if what you're, you're a monster. Is, is subjective. You're the you're it's the not, biggest monster on the show, it, and there, I'm here. It, there's too. no subjectivity to this. It's it's lemon but gelato where, is the best. Where where does that apply though? Because uh, it's you actually just said a gelato is fact. Based it's off a, what? Based off the way the universe works. Uh, next question. But Happy Hour seems to be a mix of uh, CIG employees and community streamers. Will there be a CIG Happy Hour with replay? If they ask us on, yeah. With uh, replay, yes. Um, the the the, fam the fabled yeah. replay group. Uh, no, yeah, like like if you want us on, go harass them and tell them to have us on. That basically that's. So, and now here's the thing. Talking about community interaction with CIG shows, I actually very much like this. So, there's actually been a lot of criticism with, um, with um, like shows like Tim for the Chairman, uh, and whenever and, and RTV, and whenever specifically there is like a Q and A form show about how they kind of like pick and choose their questions because 
everyone has a different view of what questions should have been answered and what questions should have been picked, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, they were actually taking questions from Meyer there, and he was he was actually drilling some good info out of them there. Um, and I do think that like actually having us like a trust community member there to curate some of the questions, like, hey, look, I'm in this shit every day. This is what I do. This is what we. I want know to what know. The, I know yeah. what people want to know. Here's five questions that we really want to know. Trust me, um, I, I think that's intelligent. And like, if, if some guy gets up there, some community guy gets up there, some streamer gets up there, and it's like, huh, what's your favorite shit, Disco Lando? Ha ha! Like, fucking get out of here with that shit. But Just cut um, off, throw them out. But like, if it, if they make consistently good decisions with the people they bring on, who are like people who are going to like 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 go get um you know good good information out of them. Um, I, I do think it was good. And I, I think that yeah. their first their first pick was pretty good. Yeah, speaking um, of, so like, like well Meyer, done, Meyer. Yeah, props to Meyer. Pretty good. Um, he's in chat right now. Yeah, but you know, like uh, it, that that went for 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 the eggshell dance that would would be bringing a community streamer onto an official CIG stream. Um, it was executed on pretty well, and I think it went it went pretty well. Um. And I, I do think that the correct way to do Q and A, if if they choose to do that in the future, is actually to have a community member perform it. Yeah. Um, because, like, um, honestly, they're just gonna get backlash, no matter what they do, um, unless unless it's done that way. Um, <laughs> and hey, at least they if it goes poorly, they have some some chump that can be like, you asked the fucking questions. I don't know. Uh, I'm really glad he didn't ask what's your favorite ship question because that would have just drove me nuts. It's like we oh know what his God. favorite ship is. It's the Starfarer. Yep. It's Dude, only, what... only you know that. You are you process <laughs> so much information. You're the only person who knew, knows that. It, it. We are at the point where we start. We need to start getting good, interesting questions again. And uh, I, I hopefully the happy hour will be a good way to have that. Um, how likely? Do we think it is that the reworked Cutlass will make it to 3.0? I definite. think that's pretty likely. It's it's definite because I'm not, I'm not feeling three. I'm not feeling 3.0. Um, like one well, of the subsequent patches, like 3.1 or something. Yeah, sure. Um, well, the thing is, is we have it confirmed to be at least at the very least between 3.0 and 3.1 because they're doing the variants at the same time, and the Cutlass rework has already been underway for at least. A month and a half. We had images of it last two. week. Yeah, and so I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be because we had the 85x, the caterpillar, appear in 2.6. Those were supposed to be in 3.0. So I think their pipeline is moving a bit faster than they expected. So I can only imagine that they are going to be working on the Cutlass Black. Also, we have started to we saw was it yesterday or the day before the Aurora has seemed to have entered its rework. We yeah, had zero yeah, idea yeah. when that was going to happen. Um, so that just goes to show that they are a bit farther along on certain things than we realized. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see from 3.0. The variants? You, you got to remember sure. that like, like within the last like, couple months, we're now in that period of like, hey, all those ship artists who were doing secret ship for the past like two years. Those are done. We, we have all those resources. Now. And not only so, are the ship artists done, but all of the... Uh, the design libraries are done. All of the like, they yeah. they've got their Fizz, design library Anvil, for Drake, Ar Anvil, Misk, RSI. RSI, Aegis. I mean, so yeah, like, like, like I will take that concession of like, hey, even Origin, you know, I think. Uh, uh, no, no, not no. Origin. Uh, I guess not the eighty five X was done separately. They're going to be. I guess they'll finish they that may, up when they, they do. They may take reference, but the yeah. fact that the three hundred I still has this rework to do the. The jump is it the origin? Yeah, it's the eight ninety jump. Is, is they it, still need yeah, to do that? Yeah, so that will probably be the flagship. If I had to make a guess, that'll be the flagship for their model. But. Yeah, uh, and like the thing you gotta remember is that like um like, like that look at the pro the, like the pace that they've been kicking out Drake ships lately, like 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 Dragonfly, cut uh, not Cutlass, um you know Herald uh, Herald Herald Caterpillar, uh, what else? God. Uh, that's, that's all the Drake ships, right? To be fair, the Herald and Caterpillar have been in development a long time. And we, and we, and we know yeah. that they're working on the Buccaneer right now, too. Um, so, like, you know, the, things are kicking with Drake right now. So, um, 
I, I think like three point one is when we'll we'll see the yeah. cut list. It's definitely a fair a, a fair safe bet. It would definitely be three point one, but I'm pretty sure it'll be three point zero. But yeah, three point one for sure. I agree with Nitro. More reclaimer, please. Um, so what other famous sci-fi ships would benefit from having a flight penis? The Millennium Falcon? Literally all of them. Oh my god, Millennium F F Falcon with big old penis? Dude, like, and it's very simple. Dude, you know that, like, awesome little flippy turret? At least make that thing extend a little bit more. It's awesome. It's so, I think here's it, an actual I question. Think... Then, wait, wait, and then, like, wait, you know, oh, even more, you have, like, like an extending, like, ra like, radar dish, and then you have, like, the two little nubs for the ball sack of, like, the turrets. Like, like, two little turret, like, domes, and it's perfect. Follow-on question well, to the persistent well, item question. How much time will everyone spend building and decorating their section of the relay outpost? How many outposts would it like to have across the verse? And any particular planet in mind for a headquarters? Let's be honest here. Look, so, we're talking about building, building stuff, like, uh, realistically, it's going to be, like, modular buildings. Like, hey, you can put down a room here and a room here and connect them how you wish, right? It's not going to be Rust-style where you're, like, placing floors and building walls and stuff. It's not going to be that. We, we, Come on. Come on. Um, so, just saying, the Relay Outpost is going to be building. It's going to be a building. No, and then no, the central no. Tower. I know where you're going with this. It's not happening. That's going to be the Relay Tower right there. No. I mean, how else are we going to get our signal out there, man? Um, and then <sighs> right at the top is a big radar dish. Um uh, weirdly enough, it's pointed it's upside down. I don't know what's up with that. It's pointed at the ground. Um, yeah, it's like a hat. But yeah, no, I definitely <laughs> like for yeah, the modularity is going to be cool. Like obviously, that's how it's going to be. But you still will be able to customize the internal kind of how you how you would with your hangar. Like you want a picture, you want a poster, you want this space color, space rock, that, space rock. You know, all your collection stuff like that. Um, what system we'd put it in? We'll have to figure out which is the most optimal because honestly, I don't think we're ever going to be just in one system. We're going to be spread out be yeah. based off of where we need where the where the news is. We go where the news is. We take our our makos. We go and we'll set up a headquarters where we need to, and we'll work from there. We're gonna we're gonna rove. We're mobile HQs. We're gonna have mobile endeavors set up for broadcasting. That the makos will come and land in and deliver the information. Then we'll broadcast around the entire verse. Broadcast. Well, okay. Broadcast. Broadcast. Well, Broadcast. We, we know that Shiver Bathory's Mako inside a ship is just going to be plastered with Backstreet Boy posters. <laughs> oh. You know, that's that's his favorite band. That's true. He he likes oh, to hide behind this this metal exterior. Tough. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. really Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys remember, um, like a few months ago, when they showed off the uh, the Crash Starfare that had been kind of like like yes. converted into like a base? Um, something like that. Uh, here's a good question. Did you hear about the SpaceX launch? Yes. I yes. watched it. It was awesome. I'm, uh... I didn't watch it. I'm really, Here. really glad that SpaceX, one, had a successful launch, two, successfully launched the satellites, and three, successfully launched the dr the pod back on the drone ship in the... And this is the... I think this is actually the more difficult launch pattern too. Like it, it excellent. When, like when people launch. say, "I wish I was back around this, the the uh, the sixties and seventies for the space era," this is it. If you yeah. want to get interested in space, this is the time to do it. This is the time to watch. This the stuff that they're doing is absolutely phenomenal. They're they're relanding rocket pods back on Earth, like. That space just got shockingly affordable. Yeah, yeah ish, like, like, ish, 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 affordable. -ish. Ish. Well, it went, it went from it went from like a trillion dollars to just a couple million. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's pretty good cut. It is <laughs> the, the the amount of savings is still ah, it's well, phenomenal. And, and when, when yeah, they like, even it, like even like even if like could they they had a few failures while they're testing this stuff out. Even if they have failures, you know, it's like, well, we, we, we got more use out of it. Yeah. If, if you get more than one use out of it, you're net positive. Even if they no, only what, what, can what, what, launch it twice, that, you've halved your cost, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, super, super stoked about the, the SpaceX launch. Uh... We have enough time for probably one more and then... 
Yeah. Uh, I've got two here. Uh, we're going to take one serious one and then one serious one, but not Star Citizen related. Um, oh. First, what is your take on some people saying that the game is pay to win since the ships you purchase will be in the start of the game? There's literally no way anyone can tell if it's going to be pay to win until the game is finished. It may well be. Balancing is critical. There's no way to tell. If, like it's it's a reasonable thing to say. This game kind of looks a little bit pay to win. That's a totally reasonable assumption. Um, they've said multiple times they will bounce things, so that will not be the case. Uh, and here's hoping that will be true. It is completely unreasonable to say this game is pay to win and make a declarative statement before the game is finished because there's no proof either way. If they are successful in getting what they wanted to way back and having it the universe be populated by about 10 to 1 like 10 ai characters to every human character that plays then no i don't believe it is pay to win because you're mostly playing against computers and you can't really out buy a computer player cs stormy um so without a shadow of a doubt it is 100 percent not pay to win and here's why um if anyone in chat uh, has heard of World of Tanks, you will know exactly where I'm going with this. If you have not, you will understand why. So World of Tanks has the ability to buy something called premium tanks. Now in World of Tanks, there's tiers 1 through 10. You cannot buy tier 10 premium tanks, but you can buy tier 8 premium tanks. Now, these things are 40, 50 bucks. They are not cheap. And you could buy it, you could create an account, free account, buy one of these things straight off, go right into tier 8 game. Here's what happens. Your ass absolutely gets smashed because people have spent their time grinding from tiers 1 through 8, understand how the game actually works. So if someone wants to take their brand, you know, brand spanking new Idris and expect to kick ass with it, they are going to be thoroughly disappointed because it takes, A, a lot to run an Idris in the first place. So you could get it out of the gate, but then within an hour or two, you may suddenly run out of fuel and now you have no credits to even make the thing go. Two, you could lose the ship in a matter of an hour because you're being so reckless with it. And three, you may not even know how the freaking thing works. So, uh, you know, people may buy a Super Hornet, whatever, and expecting to just dominate. But if they have no prior, pr um, prior flight experience, and even if they do, it's like David said, there's going to be the whole, a whole bunch of other AI around you which will make it a lot harder to actually dominate everything. Because chances are you go kill a cargo ship someone else is going to hire a hit and put a hit on you or they're really going to beef up defenses or something. There's going to be ways that that's going to prevent people from just being the almighty powerful. So it, it's interesting enough. If you actually go look online on the RSI website right now at the like leaderboards, um, there's like one dude. It, it's kind of interesting because it's all like, um, it's like sabers. Sabers are really good right now in the latest patch. So it's like saber, 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 hornet, hornet, super hornet, saber, 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 um, uh, vanguard, vanguard, vanguard. And then, like, one Aurora in there in, like, the top ten. It's like, that's what it is. And so, um, um, if you're good enough, you can make just about anything work. Um, it's kind of like Overwatch. It's like, um, in Overwatch, it's like, oh, my God, dude, you got to play the meta. These characters are bad right now. If you go watch, like, someone, like, some of these incredible Overwatch streamers, they're, like, rolling into competitive games carrying the game as Hanzo right now. And if you hop in the game right now, the competitive game in Overwatch right now, you roll Hanzo, you're going to get yelled at. Because you're, you're shit. What are you doing? Why are you playing Attack Bastion, dude? But look, the, the secret is you're just bad. And that, that's the secret is everyone is bad at video games except for the other guy. And that's that's always how it's going to be. Um, I, when this game comes out, I, 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 I foresee a lot of salty freelancers getting destroyed by Auroras. <laughs> Auroras yes. and Mustangs just kind of eating things. And people are like, oh my god, I, I didn't even put my shields up because I thought it was just an Aurora. And then it's just get destroyed by it. Yep. So that question took us a bit longer than I expected, which means we have passed the time for What which, was the last question, though? Uh, what was that? Eh, it doesn't matter. It's lost into the ether. It's gone. I'd be interested. Uh, it was, uh, what are your feelings about having a CIG Leia for Episode Nine? Leia, Star Wars, Star Wars. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Um. Look, look. I. 
No, the, I'm not, just, not yes talking, or no. Not, that's not all talking we about, need. Yes not or no. Not talking about the quality. Not talking about the quality of Rogue One. That's not what we're talking discussing here. Uh, like, like CG Grandma Tarkin and CG Leia were fucking atrocious, and the, I just wish they had written them out. Why, of why Rogue not One. just say no, Dovar? Short answer. No. Okay, there. <laughs> I I think it depends entirely on what her their uh, her estate decides. So. Um, with that, Dolbach, do you have anything coming up this week? Yeah, um, okay, so, um... Okay, <laughs> Stormy, do you have anything coming up this week? Well, I hope there's fiction on Wednesday, but as of right now, since you and I are the only writers that are on staff, <laughs> I will hope to write something for Wednesday. If you can't, I'll turn something out. Uh, if you're out there and you're interested in writing some fiction, get in touch with Stormy, because, uh, yeah, we like fiction. Um, CS. Uh, well, next week should be pretty busy for transcripts. There's Monday, which is the special time for the chairman. Yep. Uh, Wednesday, Bug Smashers, as usual. Uh, Thursday, they're going to have the regular ATV, as you know, so studio update. Uh, I don't know what segments they will have, but have something like that. Uh, and then Friday, I'm not sure. I'll have to see. Is it, It's either going to be an RTV or it's going to be another happy hour. Probably another happy hour, I would imagine, because the success of the previous one. So and look we will forward be, to that. And we will be doing notes from happy hours, correct? Yeah. So it'll be pretty much the same, Like, because we weren't really sure what was going to happen. Like, We didn't know if this was going to be just, you know streaming and just games and like we didn't know if there was going to be a Q&A in it so there more than likely will be if, if it's the same yep. format as before so yep cool uh, uh and on, on on the site right now uh just this week uh we, David you don't sure we're there for this we put out a uh, small little podcast uh kind of go kind of going over our um thoughts on the year 2016 and how it affected CIG and star system development uh, you can go. You can go find that disaster, and it's actually kind of a relay's first uh, hop into pre-recorded podcast and audio um, content. Um, and if you kind of if you like that format and you like like you know more pre-recorded audio, uh, you go listen to that and you know, let, let us, us know. know. Let us know, and you might see more of that in the future. Yeah, uh, and if there's other stuff you want us to do, let us know. Uh, we're going to continue trying to improve. We've got. Updates coming to the sites and how we do various things. Uh, for anyone else that wants some more content tonight at 6 o'clock Eastern, uh, Mr. Jake Acapella will be up on the captain's table over at uh, twitch.tv slash the Astro Pub. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, speaking of Mr. Mr. Astro Paul, uh, Mr. Paul Shelley uh, just got um, partnered. So you should go. Check him out and, and give him some love because yep. he's done a lot of cool stuff for it. Starts his community in general, and you should go touch his butthole and it's, and let him know that I I, I told you to say that. Um, how did I end up on this one? This how did we of, all, of, of all shows? I I've been on this <laughs> podcast like three times, and you know Shiver was supposed to be on, then he's like, oh no, Dovak, come in. I'm like, okay, we're it's gonna be okay, right? <laughs> It's never okay with Dolvac. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're gonna make so Sarah a strong drink after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, from all of us here at Relay, we'll see you in the verse.